everybody to <clears throat> get on here. Hello. Happy Saturday. It's really pretty out today. My camera's all dirty. But it's pretty. Hi. I'm at the market trying to plug in my phone. How are you guys doing today? So I don't know if you guys saw my live yesterday where I did the demonstration with the cup. Um, but I was thinking about it and praying about it and hi so after doing that demonstration God opened my eyes to a new level of understanding so to speak okay so for example the cup when we are damaged in life when life hurts us and like penetrates us and um, you know daggers all these holes into us so to speak like I was using as an example in the video so that we literally become drained almost like we're empty so a lot of people go through life semi sheltered um, a lot of people not a lot but there are a lot of people who are blessed enough to not have like sincerely devastating travis like absolutely travestating things happen in their life to the point where the world you can no longer ever see the world the way you once saw it the world turns upside down you can walk in the market and you feel like you know the world is you know existing but you're not a part of it do you know what I mean like when you're in that really broken place because everything you once knew is no longer because you know like if your son dies you know it it puts you in a new reality where you feel like no one on this earth could comprehend your pain and you're all of a sudden in kind of like an alternate universe. So what I'm trying to say is, so when I was putting, go back to my previous live so you can see the demonstration, but when you puncture all the, the holes in the cup, and we're using that as an example of our our hearts, our souls, our you know, our bodies, our minds, our souls. Um, and then we're drained and we're empty. But at the same time, people who are devastated to that extreme and to that extent become more open so like the more holes the more open you are the more open you are to you know the less closed-minded you are so to speak so I think that's one of the reasons like you know in the Bible God doesn't use righteous men and you wouldn't use like you know somebody who's perfect and goes to church all the time and thinks they're righteous and would look at somebody like me and be like well why would God choose to speak to her you know her life has been a mess well I believe that God you know he he has a reason for everything that he does so I believe that he takes certain people and he breaks them down and he empties their cup so to speak he drains them of everything of this world so that he can then fill them with nothing but him and his love and his understanding and compassion beyond words and understanding you know some people are so close-minded they can't even 
fathom God one. They can't fathom the deceit that's, that's happening in the world right now. They can't even begin to comprehend what somebody's trying to to tell them or if somebody's trying to help them because they're so sheltered and so closed-minded and they've never been corrupted so to speak sometimes you have to be completely destroyed like until there's nothing left in order to be rebuilt um, and I believe like because I kept asking myself why 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 you know why 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 all of a sudden why is this happening to me um, and I think that's why because you know I've lived through so much <laughs> I have so many wounds. I am so open, so to speak, that, you know, it's easier for God to use me and fill me because I'm not going to resist. Hi. I don't know if my usuals are on, so you guys probably think I'm crazy. <laughs> But we've been, um, I've been opening up more spiritually, um, about my faith because that's what God wants me to do. So this is in reference to my last live, just explaining more. So like if you're going through, because I mean my trauma, like the empty, like the puncturing and the wounds and the emptying of my cup, <laughs> my mind, my body, and my soul to the point where there was nothing left took, you know, lasted over a span of 10 years, if not more, you know, little by little I was drained until there was absolutely nothing left and that's when Jesus showed up and filled my cup, healed my wounds. And I believe, and that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. Like, I thought, oh, you know, Jesus came, and now I'm saved. But that was just the beginning. <laughs> like, I had no idea that a year later, all this, like, my eyes would truly be opened beyond anything I can explain and then you know like I was talking yesterday like why aren't pastors talking about this and why isn't it in the churches more and maybe it's because you know yes you know they believe I truly do believe a lot of them believe some of them have great intentions some of them don't we know that I mean all you have to do is walk and watch documentaries there are corrupt churches there are you know there are corrupt places all over the world but I believe that spiritually, maybe, some pastors or preachers may not be as open spiritually and as spiritually aware, even if they want to be, they weren't, maybe they weren't necessarily meant to be because God, you know, God, it's all God's will. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He chooses, you know, our life before we are even here. So, you know, if you choose, I'm going to be a preacher, it doesn't mean that God's going to just, you know, spiritually awaken you. And, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't choose this. God chose me for this. I don't think it's a choice we get to necessarily make. Yes, you can choose to do good and devote your life to God. Absolutely. But I feel like in order to be in a, in a place where you're absolutely awakened to a point beyond like understanding where people call you crazy when you're not at all crazy. I'm just a normal girl. I'm a normal mom. Um, two weeks or a month ago, you know, still playing with makeup. I didn't go crazy. I didn't lose my mind. Um, 
it's just God's way of working in my life and that's not something that you can I mean you can ask for God to work in your life but I believe that he does everything for a reason so like I had to be raped. I had to have my son die. I had to have my husband beat me. I had to fight the courts for 10 years and, you know, hide to protect my life and to protect the lives of my children. I had to live in fear. I had to be broken beyond repair in order to literally die and be reborn. And a lot of people don't, luckily, a lot of people don't have to experience that. I wouldn't wish, wish wish that on my worst enemy, what I've lived through. I would not wish upon anyone to live through that. But I feel like that's God's way of saying, like, I got you. Like, even when you were lost and broken and... I never stopped believing in him, but I kind of stopped praying because I was too broken. I felt lost and hopeless, but he still had, um, like it says in the Bible, he was still working everything for my good. Even in the worst of times, he was still working for my good even when I wasn't even thinking about him. I wasn't thinking about him. I wasn't thanking him for blessing me and, and keeping me safe. You know, all those years where I was hidden and fighting the courts, relentlessly fighting the courts, and it was me versus, like, I mean, the odds of me, the victim that they were calling crazy, winning, like, everything in the end after, t what was it? Do we fight for, we fought from 2010 to 2017, I think. Took seven years. But I walked out of the courtroom with full custody of my kids. I was awarded everything that I needed to keep myself and my kids safe. He's not allowed to have my address, not allowed to have my phone number. You know what I mean? God prevailed. You know? <laughs> I had to fight and 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 fight. But I believe that, you know, it wasn't me. It was above and beyond me. It was God. Anyway, I just wanted to give you hope. So, if you are in, like, this awful place where you're, you know, maybe you lost a child or you're in a extremely abusive relationship or you were molested or you know you're hooked on drugs or like just say something really really awful is happening in your life as long as you remain faithful and don't lose hope all of the bad will transform into more good than you could ever humanly imagine. So, never lose hope. Because, I mean, I'm living, I'm, a, I'm like living proof of a miracle in and of itself. I shouldn't even be sitting here, you know what I mean? I am free from all abuse, I am free from all guilt, I am, I... I have an amazing man who loves and respects me. I have four beautiful children. And I have God who is working in me every day. And that just goes to show that you can come from, you know, absolute horrendous trauma to, you know, nothing but, you know, glor the glory of God blessings, you know, and a light in the darkness. So I love you guys. I'm going to run into the market and I'll hop back on when my peeps are on. So have a great Saturday and I apologize. I still have the same top on from yesterday because I have four kids and sometimes I don't have time to change. Real life. Alright, I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.